Halloween is less than two weeks away, and what better way to celebrate than by highlighting some of the most haunted places in Metro Detroit? Yeah, we're talking local. One of those places being the Whitney, an iconic Detroit restaurant. Local ghost hunters checked it out and heard a woman humming a song. The sound is amplified, so listen closely. Did you hear that? Did all right, to share more about their experience at the Whitney and other haunted places, we have co-founders of Detroit Paranormal Expeditions, Jeff Adkins and Todd Bonner. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, first and foremost, what did you think when you heard that humming? Give us kind of the, the circumstances. Who was there? How long into the visit did that happen? And, you know, chills, no chills? Um, so this happened in the carriage house. There's actually a carriage house behind the Whitney. and. It's probably what 2,000 square feet. It's pretty, pretty big. big, yeah. So we had just walked in there and we went upstairs, and it's it's broken into like different rooms. And Jeff was in one room, and myself and two other investigators went to like they have Grace's table. Grace Whitney actually went to the carriage house to have tea. She had a table set up, and it's still there to this day. And we weren't ready to investigate or anything, and it just happened in the moment. And um, something like that is very rare that you, you know, three of us heard it. And then we kind of got excited, you can hear a little bit, and then Jeff came running in, he missed it. And then when we started asking questions, you know, we were wanting to see if she would communicate with us, we got nothing the rest of the night. So it was just that one, like maybe she was letting us know that she was there, but it was, um, it kind of just tailed off. It was just very eerie to hear that. We think um, it could be kind of a residual thing. So, you know, people think that you can always necessarily communicate with spiritual energy. Sometimes it's not intelligent. It's just going to do what it's going to do when it's going to do it. Um, and that was unprovoked. We didn't try speaking with her. It just sort of happened. So who knows why that's triggered? It could be triggered by something like the environment. It could be the humidity, um, something like that. We just science doesn't have its mind wrapped around that yet. You were at the Whitney for a reason. The Whitney has a history. Tell us a little bit about that history. The Whitney is uh, it's one of the most amazing places in the city. Um, it dates back to 1895 when David Whitney started um, constructing it. And he only lived there for five years before he passed away. And then um, his wife lived there for another 17 years. And then Grace Whitney died in the 30s, I believe. Um, but uh, it's had a very storied history. It's really beautiful. It's a unique place in the city. Everyone should check it out. Now it's a restaurant, obviously. But in between that time when it was a residence and a restaurant, it was also a nursing home. Um, so a lot of interesting uh, background in that place. You can certainly see what may have contributed. Aside from the Whitney, what are some other spots that for paranormal lovers out there they need to check off their list? We um, actually recently discovered, it sounds weird because this place, this house is 120 years old, the Frederick Stearns House on Jefferson. It's right across actually from the UAW headquarters. Um, and we were allowed to come in there and investigate, the first group to ever investigate there. And, I think the first night we were there, we, we had a lot of paranormal activity. Um, that's now one of our favorites because it's, it's so beautiful. It's hard to imagine it being haunted because people get that uh, idea in their head that it has to be run down. And, and like the Whitney, it's not at all. It's a very beautiful, opulent place. And uh, that's turning into like one of our favorite places in Detroit. Yep. And the inside of that house um, is very much like the Whitney. It's kind of ornate. There's really beautiful wood carvings throughout it. Um, Rachel Mitchell. Um, and her husband had, had really tastefully spent a lot of time um, restoring this place. And now you can rent out rooms there, so we went and investigated. Um, we did, when we were in the basement, we heard somebody walk through the dining room above us. Um, the only other person there that night was her, and she was on the opposite side of the house the entire time. So, so we it ran wasn't up there her. to see who it was. Ooh. There was nobody. And oh. you kind of, when that happened, you kind of get chills. We could, we, we could feel that it wasn't her, because the footsteps are kind of heavy. And it walked into like the dining room, formal dining room area. And so we heard we were in the basement at the time. We ran upstairs, no one there. For those who aren't familiar, tell us a little bit about Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. So DPX, as we call it, um, was founded in December of 2016. Todd and I have both been doing this for a little bit more than 10 years. Um, we met in a different group that would go around um, really the country, a lot in Michigan, but really around the country to these haunted places and spend the night and see what we experienced. But we wanted to get a little bit more creative with it and do more. Um, and so we branched out and made DPX and it's been quite a fun adventure so far. Okay, so Nancy Whiskey's and Frederick Stern's house, also known to be haunted. What paranormal experiences have you witnessed or heard in that 
there. <laughs> Mancy's has got a really cool history. Um, if anyone's seen The Irishman, you know about Jimmy Hoffa. Um, well, Jimmy Hoffa was, has a connection there. He'd use the phone booth, which is still in the still bar there. today, yeah. um, right when you walk into the left. So it's a really cool piece of history to see there. But we were talking with a bartender um, just this past summer, and there was, he was saying that glasses have shot off the shelves on there. Um, they'd close the bar up and be in the back and hear people talking, think that people were still in the bar, and they'd walk out there and there's nobody there. So, you know, being so old, I mean, that's more than a century old, too. I think that's right there around 120 years itself. Um, there's just so many people in and out of that place, so much energy that could remain. We only have about 30 seconds left, so have you already mentioned the scariest thing you've experienced? And if not, what was it? Mine would be seeing a black silhouette walking down my hallway towards That'll do the, it. in my sure bedroom. Will. That was pretty scary. It, it, it's a long story, but yeah, I had this, during the same week Jeff experienced that. I had a shadow figure in my bedroom over my bed too. So it was, um, we don't, we still to this day can't figure out why that came for both of us. It's Halloween year round for these two. Really quickly, if the public sees this, they want to get involved. What are their options? Uh, check out our website, DetroitParanormalExpeditions.com. We've got some upcoming events, one at the Frederick Stearns House, um, one in Monroe, and a couple others as well. All that's right there on our website. All right, Jeff and Todd, thank you both for being on with us. Thank you. Thank you.